record this season makes dismal reading for the Ibrooks fans and today, incredibly, they faced high-flying Dundee United hoping to avoid a sixth successive league defeat. However, one of Rangers' best performances of the season came at Tannadice when the teams last met. And today, of course, Jock Wallace made his way to the home dugout for the first time in five years. As Archie discovered, the big man was made more than welcome. A rapturous welcome for Jock Wallace. Listen to that crowd. The Rangers support, who really have suffered for some time, now regard him as their salvation. But I think he realises he's got a huge task in front of him. They don't seem to think so, do they? And then the Rangers team, Jimmy Nicol, the man who played so well for Northern Ireland on Wednesday night, and that marvellous one they had over West Germany, he was telling me before the game, He's found it a little difficult to adjust from North Atlantic football, but uh, he's getting down, and his one wish is to play in a successful Rangers team. And there is the Rangers team today, only one change from last week, with Sandy Clark in for Mitchell. Dundee United, the champions. They scored seven goals last week. They're playing superbly well, and, of course, they realise that in a sense, Ibrooks is one of their very unhappy grounds. They've only won twice out of their 16 visits, and by their standards, that's not at all good. Somebody playing very well for them at the moment is young Tommy Coy. He came on uh, last week, he was signed from Clyde Bank, and the manager was raving about him, and if you get high praise from Mr McLean, you really can't play. Referee today, Tommy Muirhead from Stennis Muir. Rangers to kick off with a huge crowd backing them up. The crowd uh, much bigger than normal, as you might expect. A rather special day for Ibrooks today. Bitingly cold afternoon. I thought McKinnon was pushing. Eamon Vannon, beautifully taking Nickel on. That's a good looking ball, it's just past. And the first touch of the ball by Tommy Coyne, looking very impressive. He struck that well. A venomous looking shot. Uh, difficult to tell from this angle how close it was, but by the reaction. The United players, it wasn't all that far away. Coist touched it down neatly. Dawson, Cooper. Well, brilliant run by Cooper. Free kick right on the edge of the box. Superb little touch. I think he was going to try and take them on and get to the line and squid it over, you can see, just outside the box. So, Cooper's left-footed free kick. Nico! Resounding lunge of the ball, and Jimmy Nicol, of course, can hit them from that distance. Neatly touched by David Dodge, there's Coyne. Beautiful ball for Mill. And Mill did very well to get that across. It was really stretched. I thought Dawson might just manage to get to the ball, but I think Dawson might uh, have a difficult afternoon against this man's pace. Patterson just got there. He was up an attack. There's McPherson. Nickel. Kept his head. Really very big crowd at Ibrooks now. Redford.
trying to find McCoist. That's Dawson. Cooper. Away he goes. Oh, a brilliant run by Cooper. Very unfortunate. He's really enjoying this afternoon, all right. McCoy's took his eye right off it. Offside, and uh, you have to say about Ali McCoy's that Rangers have not yet had the best from him. Far from it. Clark and golf and a high, high bounce. I don't think you could blame him, uh, the goalkeeper Hamish McAlpin for that because I think he was as surprised as anybody. Redford, McPherson to Cooper. This is where Rangers are ticking through this man. And up comes Ralph Bill. Rangers got the corner kick. And there's no doubt about it that the player of David Cooper is sending tremors through this United defence. The big man in for the corner kick. Patterson. Here's Cooper again. And Milne, good defensive work. Back he comes. Dawson. Just a little too quick that time for Cooper. Goff. Didn't have a particularly good international Wednesday. Well, oh, it's good play by United and Coyne. Looking for the one two brilliant move. Best move of the match so far. Almost caught Rangers out. Clark. A Christ. Goff. Free kick. Rangers retaliated extremely well there. I must say I was impressed with the way United linked up front and in that sudden counter-attack by Rangers. Good piece of football all round. Just a bit too strong and McClellan. I think perhaps realising he might just have got that. Shuffle there by Coyne, I'm very impressed by him. That's Coyne, picked up by Redford. To Cooper. There he goes again. Oh. Really in his element, that's a foul ball. Redford tries to go through. And that was brilliant play by Cooper. When he does this, I mean, there are few in the game to equal him. And these are the things in football we should all be proclaiming and publicizing. Skill like that. A good play by Coyne, that's superb. Very clever indeed. Milne is going to let fly, and he does. And Peter McCloy had two looks, two touches, and a dive to stop it all. Nowhere near McPherson. No side. Here's McCoy's. Post and just over. Rangers desperately unlucky. Again, it was an awkward kind of ball for McCoy's to take. Decided to hit it hard rather than place it. And look how near it was even to Sandy Clark. Which 
just put away. And there's nobody in the middle for Angels. Cooper to Redford. And beautifully plucked out of the air by Hamish McCallum. Well, when it started off, it didn't look particularly fierce. Seemed to gather acceleration, as it were. Good save by McAlpin. Pushed out there by Kirkwood. There's Bannon. Oh. Took that like a sweeper instead of a striker. McPherson, Clark, touches it out, and the Patterson hasn't got the poise of the striker to sweep it away. A little bit of juggling there by Sandy Clark, and he did extraordinarily well to push that to the big defender the way wide it went there goes the halftime whistle we've had a very noisy hybrid today for very good reasons giving tremendous support to this man and his team and indeed they've played uh, with a great deal of conviction particularly this man here in the first 20 minutes he was brilliant but certainly young Tommy Coyne took the eye I liked his touches it was an excellent shot he had and might have put United in the lead and Rangers were desperately unlucky but Ali McCoy hit the post and then that ball fell so near Sandy Clark to put it away well this halftime shot gives you an idea of how the Rangers supporters have responded to the return of Jock Wallace, a huge crowd. Really is a long time since I've seen that govern stand opposite us, almost entirely full outside of an old firm game. And that is an indication of the affection the Rangers supporters hold for the big man. United playing against the wind this half was gusting quite uh, sharply early on the afternoon Goff that's McKinnon well the press photographers um, who know a thing or two about football have decided to go behind the Dundee United goal one wonders if they've gambled the right way move to the right wing Clark nowhere near it Jimmy Nickel Clark to Nickel on a bad ball and that's straight from a coin good enough header but uh, really Hamish McAlpin wasn't all that bothered Nickel whether that was a cross or and he was pulled back surely yeah free kick I'm not quite sure whether his uh, original touch was a cross or a shot everybody in the penalty area virtually everybody Patterson Clark peels for hands McCoyst now, too many players and too slow, parting with the ball. The Rangers pounding on. Cooper. There's McPherson. McCoy hesitates. And there's Sandy Clark. And I think it's offside. And Ralph Bell, who was injured, is coming off. And on to the Ibrox top again comes one of the great Rangers heroes, Derek Johnston, to play against his old club. 
And I'm quite sure that Derek Johnson will want to prove something out there today that he should never have been allowed to vegetate at Ibrox and eventually to leave. Patterson and Rangers lumbering a bit in midfield. United beginning to get a grip of this game. Bannon. Here's Holt. And that's a corner kick. Catching Peter McCoy cold. Eamon Bannon with a corner kick. Halfway through the second half. And then again. Pushed away by McClellan. Rangers hemmed in at the moment. Billy Kirkwood. But that's a very dangerous one. <laughs> The head of Holt, now McCoy. Here's Russell. Lifting it wide, Redford and well away by Richard Goff. Kirkwood picking it up. Neither goalkeeper has had an afternoon, has given him any scares. And that's brilliantly saved from Bobby Russell. Well taken by Russell, difficult ball for the goalkeeper, slight bounce on it. Dealt with it confidently. Bit of a push, free kick. Simply giving it away to Holt. Throw to United. Three minutes of the game left. Patterson away with it. There's McKinnon, bad one out. Bannon, dipping. Good shot. That, to do, that was well controlled. No scoring, goal is dropped. Well, it's uh, probably not gone unnoticed that I've been critical of Rangers for quite some time, which makes it all the more important to say tonight, as unambiguously as I can, that they played today with a conviction that I haven't seen them display for a very long time. They were playing for the jerseys again, and whilst there are still glaring flaws in the side, and there are some players there who I think, quite frankly, will not make the grade under Jock Wallace, you felt that they had already developed a very sound relationship with the manager, who, although he doesn't suffer fools gladly and whose glare is like a clap of thunder at times, is a fair man who clearly is going to give his present players a chance to prove themselves. Now, I still think they'll need a fresh face or two, and that obviously is an option which Jock Wallace uh, realises is still wide open for him. United unbelievably insipid today. I can hardly remember an occasion when they played really well at Ibrox. Yet again, so many of them gave the impression they would settle for a draw, and a draw they got. Well, what are the big man? Well, of course, it was a special day for Jock Wallace, and I couldn't help but ask him firstly after the game how he felt when he walked out of the Ibrox tunnel once again. The tremendous uh, sensation of sort of welcome home, you know. Mm. The, the, but they've been behind the fans this week at Aberdeen, they were tremendous, and today they were tremendous. Uh, I don't think the United, with due respect, bring them an appeal here, and we're all Rangers fans, 95, 99% of Rangers fans, which proves my point that I've been making for a while. Scotland needs a good Rangers team, and we've got to work hard to give them one, to get these fans, because that's, that's what it's all about, keeping the fans happy by playing good football. Now, that was successful for you. Obviously, you're a man that likes to win every particular game. What disappointed you about the day? Uh, the finishing. 
we didn't finish too well. Uh, enough shots in the goals, and we made a lot. We made a lot of unforced errors by giving the. What I mean, what I mean by that, by giving the ball away without, without any pressure. But we will work at that. And that's what we need to do. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, it's up to them, though I don't hope, I know it will happen. They'll play with more confidence. Well, I think people recognise the very fact that you want determination and a bit of uh, spirit about the play. But I think you also put the stress on skill, don't you? And surely you would agree that in David Cooper, you've got one of the best players in Scotland. David Cooper was, is, looked as if he had his appetite back. Coming back in the bus from Aberdeen last week, I told them I want five, I'm to lose five pound in a month. And I lost five pound in a week. You did? And I told them to go home and get fed up well fed just that he know all the yeah. jargon stuff yeah. he came in and he looked really well and I was quite delighted with Davy. and I know he's away home I took him off injured he's away home happy with his own performance and I'm quite happy with him I was quite happy more than happy with McClelland uh, and the rest get run their hearts out for them now running the hearts out is fine I accept that but the support now, any support, not just Rangers supporters, any supporters, they want entertainment and they want the David Coopers in this. So right. I, I take it that you want to, to project this as well, skill as well as well, enthusiasm and drive. The first thing, the first requirement in football is ability. Then fitness of the mind and fitness of the body, tactics and then confidence to do all that. And we have a fair standard of player here with the like, what I call top class fitness. I don't think they're fit in their minds simply because they've had a bad time with, with the press and the pressure mm -hmm. of being the Rangers here. Uh, they're, they're a wee bit green in tactics and we'll have to brush up on that. There's a lot, there's a lot of work to do, Archie, but we've got to try and get them to show their abilities, have the confidence and the fitness to show their abilities and play with the same conviction and commitment that they played with today. Now, they had that. Yes. They had that. And you want success. Yes. And you said you'll get success and you'll struggle to get success. Would you, at the same time, admit that you might have to bring in new faces? If I do that, the players here will be given a fair chance to prove yourself. And I, there's a lot of skill in the team. They've just got to get more confidence and, and a wee bit, one or two victories under their belt and, and get the fans behind them in that sense. We wouldn't do us much harm with.